Okay, Midpen Bank Podcast, we got something really special today. As you all know from the last year, we do this as an audio podcast only. But today we're doing video audio podcast. And I have with me Ali Barubi, the sports director for WHTM TV 27 News here in, in Harrisburg. And Ali, we're going to have a fun day today. We're going to talk to a bunch of celebrities, mostly uh, athletes, mm. um, some from football, some from the NHL, some from the NBA. Uh, some from Major League Baseball. So, how, how as a sports director, you got to be re- ready to go. This is heaven, by the way. Mm-hmm. You've assembled the who's who of celebrities and sports. You brought them all here to beautiful Hershey, Pennsylvania, of course, for a great cause in the fight against breast cancer. But really, just an awesome group of individuals, and and truly a testament to the work that you all are doing. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna chat with oh, yeah. them. We're gonna tell some crazy stories. I mean. They're, this is a dream come true. It's going to be tough to keep them channeled in well. on, you know, <laughs> telling stories that you can actually put on <laughs> put on the air on a podcast. But, you know, this this has been a a fun uh, time trying to put this golf tournament together. And as Ali said, it's a golf tournament that raises money for breast cancer charities. We have two great ones, the Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition uh, that serves women who already have breast cancer. And they also do some funding of research. And the Bosser Center down at the University mm-hmm. of Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, uh, Dr. Susan Domchek and Dr. Payal Shaw, who are doing cancer research. They're trying to f- figure out a way to solve this BRCA gene mutation. And what they need is, is money. And so we've put this golf tournament together. And I call on a bunch of my celebrity friends to come and help us attract some really generous sponsors. And that's the formula. So, you know, we thought Scott Bostjancic, who's a the producer of our podcast, we thought that, you know, let's put together a video podcast. Let's bring in the best (laughs) to help me with this because I'm not a professional. And we're going to have a day of great interviews that we hope to share with you over the next couple months. So here we go. Mid-Pen Bank, Celebrity Golf Classic 2024 and the Mid-Pen Bank Podcast. All right, here we are. We're back with Greg Lloyd. Now, this is he, he needs a better introduction than that because, yeah, like, does. everyone knows Greg Lloyd, and he played you know years in the NFL for the Steelers and one of the best linebackers of his day. But he's the newly minted 2024 Mid Penn Bank Celebrity Golf Classic Shootout winner. So this is the coveted trophy. This is why we're here, right? Like this is <laughs> like you look. You're so good with with all the sponsors and all the people around this thing. But the thing that really brings guys like you here is because you love that shootout. You love that competition, don't you? Absolutely. But you know, you guys don't don't that 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 shouldn't overshadow the reason why we're here. Yeah, like yeah. Say, you know why? Right. You know, we're raising money for cancer and research and all that. And but we like we talked about last year. This this is family. I mean, we 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 talked about can't wait till next year. Right. Now. Right. But it's family. You come back every year. You see the same people. And you know, we got we've gotten a year older. And it's like we're trying to do something, you know, new. But you know, to see all your players that you play with, guys that you paired with, and things of that, and they want they want to win. So yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a big deal to be able to come back and represent. It's a big deal to be able to come back and represent, but especially you know being being a steal. Right. You know, mm. They want this to be, you know. Well, that other thing that flies. <laughs> yeah, we had we had never you know, early on yeah, we had yeah. tons of eagles, yeah, and yeah, now yeah, over the past few years we always had Merrill okay. Hodge representing the Steelers, and we got yeah. you, and then we oh, got yeah. Mike Merriweather, yes, and We're you know we, some. we we need to get Jerome <laughs> Bettis, we need to get a couple other guys here, but, but it, it can be done. Yeah, it can be done. But you know, it to me, it's 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 that camaraderie coming back, guys. You know, after this is over with and during the time, you know, and and like I say, you, you, I think we was talking about it earlier, the intensity. Right, that you have to have to play in this, and this is this is not our sport. No, and, but I understand how those guys out on tour can do this for four days in a row. Yeah, and stuff like that. To do it for four hours, it's like, okay, I mean, I'm done. Well, but but what a day! I mean, you know, and day. and so you know, look, we all do know why we're here, right. right? And and you guys, all you celebrities, and and I know a lot of you come from all over the country, and if you don't do that, if you don't make that mecca for us then we don't have this right right? and you know we just have a run-of-the-mill golf tournament and we may raise a little bit of money but we've raised some pretty significant dollars for breast cancer charities and and you know the one down in philadelphia the bosser center at university of penn medicine you know when i was talking the other night like they're making some real serious progress on this stuff right and all they need is they just need more money Right. right right and so you guys taking the time to come do this and look it's fun right 
Yeah. We have we you love playing golf. We go to nice dinners. We have you know nice drinks and you know really good camaraderie. Right. But that's that's the that's the secret sauce, right? Right. right? right. And and well, it's near and dear to me simply because I, I have two sisters who are breast cancer survivors. Oh, I know that. And so because of that, when when I got involved in this, it was like okay, I, I you know I think when when, when when Chris calls me, Chris calls me in April. By the way, right? <laughs> You're gonna be here, and I'm like. I'm not gonna miss it. <laughs> so That's it's beautiful. near and dear to me because I, I always tell my sister, I said, "Listen, I'm planning a golf tournament in Seattle, in, in Harrisburg." I said, "There's four breast cancer right?" She goes, "Oh, you know what?" I said, "But you know, I have you, and you know, my sister, I said, I always have you guys in mind when I'm here because you know that's what it's about. Right? When you guys can come through and go, and, you know, they still have to go and get checked up and things of that nature. But that's where the research and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, is that. So me being here kind of solidifies, you know, to them that you know I got your back." Right. You know, I'm always going to be there for you, but you know, with all the guys are coming in, it's like you know the money that we're raising, you know, for this that you know hopefully they can you know we can put it into this, put yeah. it into this thing, and like who, who who doesn't want to do that? So you know, but you guys put on a great event, man. You got great people, you know, working behind the scenes and staff members and all that stuff, and it makes it so easy for us to come here. You know, it's like we don't have to do anything. You yeah. playing, you come here, and you just you know you're taking care of guys. Guys love that, but um, you know that's the, I mean for us that that's what makes it. So the other interesting part about having guys like you here, and it happened, you know, your first year here, it happened last year, and it happened this year. I saw it last night. When you guys all sit around, and you know, we got you, and we got Merriweather, and we got Seth Joyner, and we got LT, and we got Corey Miller, and we got, you know, all those old great linebackers. What do you guys talk about? Like, cause I feel like I'm cheating if I sit there and like duck in on your conversation. Like, I don't, I don't know if I deserve to be there. Well, you know, we we got uh, what's the young kid? Name? What's the young linebacker? Uh, 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 no, uh, Clemson. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Patrick Sapp. Patrick, yeah. Patrick Sapp. And see, Patrick's a young guy in the group, but he still, you know, he he still gets it. But it's like the comparison is like when LT's and LT's are old. Yeah. We all, we all, we all. Yeah, we know that, that right? But, but I mean, Seth is always going to be the intimidator. Right. He's going to be. Seth, Seth can be in the middle of, you know, eating food and having a good time, and you look up at you, you think he's having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, man, we just reminisce about, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm next to Keith Byers last night. And we're talking. I told Keith, I hated playing against you. Yeah. I hated playing against him because not only was he big, he was big and he was fast. Yeah. You know. But I told him, I said, I knew, in my scout report, that you was left hand. Right. As they said, so I always wanted to tackle you when you switch balls in your right hand. Right. And he goes, Greg, you're not supposed to know that. I said, but, I said, but that's the kind of stuff we do. But it's just the stories that we talk about and, you know, some who, who you know, who, who's the guy that you didn't want to play against? Who's the best tackle? Who's this and that? And then we we just share stories about it and you know, stuff that you guys don't know. It's like you hit a guy and everybody thinks, man, he hit that guy, but you don't realize you get up and you go, That hurt me as much. Know, it's like both shoulders numb. I'm seeing birds and stars and everything, but you gotta you gotta go to home. And I remember Thomas Everett, I hit that tell him about Christian McCoy and Christian McCoy. Oh, man. And, and I go back to the huddle and I remember Thomas Everett said, hey, 95, you okay? And I just shook my head and go, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but me at 75% is going to be better than my backup at 100%. Is that the hardest, hardest person you ever had? Absolutely had Kevin Mack was a nightmare. Really? The entire team. Yeah. Kevin Mack hurt everybody in my defense. Yeah. But, um, you know, but that's, that's, that's the nature of the game. Totally different than now. Right. So we have to make that comparison. Right. So. And I think, you know, you know, the guys that are playing now, you guys are seeing a different. I know they want everybody wants it to be safe and all that, but it's just to us, it's touch football. You know, we we talked yeah. to Pete Shaw about that. Yeah. He was one of the first guests today, and and I talked he about the different play when they had leather helmets. So yeah, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I said to Pete, "What's the you know what's the difference?" I know the answer to this. Right. What's the difference between the game in the seventies and eighties and now? Right. He said, "Well, we played on dirt fields. We got our uniforms were muddy, and we had blood." And you know, yeah. but if you if you tell the guys now, like I, I hear sometimes, I'll, I'll turn on. I, I don't watch football. people think you do, but I don't watch, but. You turn on like in a couple of weeks when they get ready to go to training camp, and somebody's gonna put a microphone in somebody's face. Hey, you guys have to be in training camp, and I'm waiting for that cat to go. I'm waiting for somebody to go. Heck no! Everybody's going. Yeah, man. Can't. But they're saying it because they're there for seven days. Right. We went to training camp, and I was drafted by Coach Snow. Two weeks of training camp, no games. Mm -hmm. That was like, and basically it was like there was no cutting. You basically eliminate yourself. Right. You know, guys just like can't cut it. 
and they they walk away, they leave, whatever. Then you had four four weeks of you know training camp, a game, training camp, a game, and we didn't break training camp until the very last game wow. of the season. These guys go seven days and they can't hit four of those seven days. And then for about a month and a half, you guys are watching touch football, bad tackling, helping each other up. And it's like, I want to jump through the television and kick everybody's ass on that. Like, right. What are, you, what are you doing? Yeah. Let me help this quarterback up. I don't, you know, but it's it's just different. And I understand it. And I think that that level, you know, when you're trying to, you know, when you're trying to make the game safe, yeah, everybody wants that. But they are warning me now, I'm taking it away from you guys. Right. I mean, you know. I don't like. Well, you see that because even the Eagles a year or two ago, they they had a problem. They couldn't tackle. Like they, you know, they don't practice. No, and they, you know, people yeah. were getting through one, yeah. two, three, yeah. four, five yeah. tackles, and yeah. it's like, God, you know, it's well, got to be a tougher game. When you don't practice it, you can't do it. But what the thing of it is, I'm the profession. It's my job. It's my right. number. It's my name. So even if we don't do it, I know enough to grab a rookie after practice. And say, hey, listen, let's 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 work on some tackling. Then. I right. take him down, but you run, I square you up. You run, I square you up. At least we're getting it in, right? You know. But if you don't practice, I don't care what it is you do. If you don't practice, it, you're gonna be really hard. Like it. Right. You know. And so that's what you guys are getting. You're getting that. We don't practice, so tackling, so we're not gonna hit anybody. We're not gonna tackle anybody. You know. They got to make rules now so that you can't run behind a guy and pull him down because everybody's scared to hit somebody. It's, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I think I think I got a new idea for a fundraiser. I think next year I'm going to sell tickets to that little group session Absolutely. that you guys have. Absolutely. I'm going to say you want to sit in on them. Absolutely. Now you can, you got to keep your mouth shut. Absolutely. No, <laughs> you, no can't, you can't participate no, in the no talk. Yeah, guys, you're just guys, you're there to listen. Guys will put you in your place real quick. <laughs> you know, maybe we won't go. We'll just let Seth put them in their place. <laughs> yeah, Seth can do that all by himself. Hey, my himself. man, thank you so yeah, much no for problem. coming back another year. Here. You're the best. You are absolutely the best, yeah, and I love you, man. You and a great tournament, one of the best, if not the best that I played. Well, now you you are obligated to come back next year because you got to defend your championship. Yeah, I, and, and I also have to choose the dinner. I was yeah. going to say, speaking <laughs> so you of get which, the dinner. You do a preview. Uh, What's got to be on the menu? One well, thing. Oh, I'll tell you this. I have to check with Ted first. I can't give you anything. Yeah, you, you, uh, I, I have to. I have to check with Ted first because Ted's like he's half of it. But for me, yes. because I'm a Georgia boy, we got to have something southern. So Heck I'm gonna yeah. let you. I'm gonna let you think about that. Oh, I got a lot of options. <laughs> All right, there we go. Options. So, so, so it'll be something from the south, and then if they don't like it, then they don't have to eat it. Signature so, drink. Um, it's two. If if there's no eagle rare in the room, then it's basil Hayden. All right. All right, Zampon- Zamponia will make sure there's basil uh-huh. Hayden. What was the first one? Eagle rare. Eagle rare. Eagle rare. If there's no eagle rare, it's basil Hayden. All right, we're going to make sure there's Eagle Rare. Look at that. I'm looking forward to the Champions Dinner already. Yeah. Is it next year? It is next year. There'll be a Champions Dinner. For the people that don't know what that is, it's to celebrate the win that they had yesterday, and they get to pick the menu, and they get to pick the drinks, and you know, we just have a little bit of a preview. So something Southern on the food menu and some good bourbon or whiskey on the on the drink. Absolutely. I think Ted will probably go along with both of those things. I think he'll enjoy it. Love you, man. Have a great rest of the day. All right, here we are back with Grant Fuhr, NHL Hall of Famer, five-time Stanley Cup winner, one of the best goalies in NHL history. So, Grant, how did you get here? Like, what why, What brings you the whole way to Hershey? Uh, this trip, something pleasurable, golf. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, golf and a chance to raise a bunch of money. Yeah. And I think it's a great cause. It's a great event. So, we love coming back to it. Like, we love having you. I mean, it was, like, really special. The first year I heard you were coming, I'm like, Grant, you're he's coming to my golf tournament. <laughs> like, and that's the most amazing thing I've heard of. But so now you have a little bit more of a relationship with Hershey than just coming to this golf tournament. Well, we have which a good I, side and a bad side. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the sides. The good side? The good side is this tournament, playing golf in Hershey. The bad side a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we made a visit. We may have left a little piece of silverware here, so couple of years now. For people who don't know, Grant is one of the broadcasters for Coachella Valley, an AHL affiliate of the Seattle Kraken. Here's the story I want everyone to know about you. And I Uh-oh. heard it from the Coachella Valley front office. Oh, what I do now? They're starting this <laughs> franchise. This man lives in Palm Springs. They just built a beautiful arena, new team. Everyone's excited. And he calls the 1-800 number and says, hey, my name's Grant, and I would like to help out in any way that I can. So they take your information 
They pass it along, and someone goes, Grant Fuhr called to ask if he could help us. And they were like, yeah, he just said he whatever that we needed, we would he would help with. And they were like, do you understand, whoever took your number did not understand the impact this man has had on hockey. But the fact that you just volunteer for the good of the sport, wanting to stay involved, I think speaks to how humble you are. And it, I was blown away. Well, I was going to go to the games anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so as I, whether I go as a fan, whether I go, go to help the team, it doesn't really matter. It was going to be there anyhow. So we go down, have some fun. Get to talk hockey every night. Life's good. So a lot of the guys, a lot of the football players say that they don't watch football anymore. Mm. You know, you you talked to LT a couple of years ago and he said, I really don't don't, don't ask Doesn't me questions about football because I don't follow the game. Yeah. And Greg Lloyd just said that same thing. He said, I don't watch the game because the game's so much different today. But it's not like that with you and hockey. No, I'm still a hockey junkie. Yeah. Come, come playoff time, I enjoy watching. Were you a game. hockey junkie like From all the time the th- I was about me? Yeah. 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 I and love, it, and that's another. An, I love being around the game. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing I think that you and Ron Jaworski share, right? Because he was like, he told me he loved football before he was ever really a significant player in it, and he's he stayed involved in football. He's been around the game, you know, all of his life, and it seems like it's that same thing with you. Yeah, pretty much. You know, if you love the game as a kid, you might as well keep the love of it. Right. I and mean, I was lucky enough to play it, but I'm also a big fan of it. So. Right. But has the game changed over the years? Yeah, it's changed a bunch, but at the same time, it's still hockey. Who, when you were growing up and following hockey, who were your, who's your favorite goalie? Started off with Glenn Hall. Yeah. But Glenn, his farm was about three miles from where I grew up. So I get to see a lot of Glenn as a kid. And then Tony Esposito, because we caught the same way. Right. So guys like that, Bernie Perrant, a good friend of mine now. Mm-hmm. So it, the older guy, I really appreciate the older guys. Right. Because you watch what they went through. You look at the equipment, you look at the game and you like to see the evolution of the game. Well, there, there's certainly no one that had, was more successful than you in your time period but, but we, had, we had a pretty good squad yeah you had a pretty good squad you had a couple of good guys a couple playing of good players yeah, right. kind of like hershey a couple of but good players when <laughs> when in that time period who did you think was other than yourself of course who did you who were your other favorite goalies in the time i played yeah the time i played would have been the best billy smith was probably the money goalie at that time mm-hmm. playing for the islanders i caught tony at the very end of his career i got his last year year and a half so I get a chance to play against him a couple of times. You had Patrick Waugh came in as I got a little bit older. Mark Patrick Waugh, came yeah. in. So I get to play against some pretty good ones. Did you play against Ken, uh, Ken Dryden? I missed Ken. Oh, I did reti- you? Ken retired early. So yeah. I missed him by a couple of years. My brother was at the event last night, and he's like, that's ah, Grant Fear, man. Grant Fear was one of his <laughs> he's like He's like a little fanboy. He's like, can you take a picture with him? And he, I said, do you think he was the, the best – goalie of all time and he said well kind of hard to argue against that because of you know success he said but for my money kenny dryden I he said Terry kenny Sodger. dryden was like six foot four he said he took up the entire net first of the big goalies yeah yeah but for me it would be terry sawchuck yeah if you go back far enough yeah he set all the records and kind of set where everybody wanted to be right so mm-hmm. he was the benchmark and that's what you try to follow do you do any uh, type of coaching or working with like little kids and if kids ask i'll go out and help them yeah i enjoy getting out in the ice still and yeah still enjoy teaching do you you're good pretty good skater i can still skate yeah so i haven't lost that yet <laughs> it's, it's coming but i haven't lost it yet so what's what's lisa doing today this uh spa day yeah She's hang at the spa relax you know she has we, we talked about this with a bunch of guys today that you know what you guys do for this tournament is irreplaceable right if there's no you there's no sponsors if there's no sponsors there's no contribution <laughs> But the wives that come along with us, you, they do just as much as you guys do for this they tournament. They probably do more behind they, the scenes. They might do a lot more behind the scenes. And so today they're getting a little reward. Yeah, they get you know, to hang out at the spa and enjoy little, the day. little spa day, yeah. This is kind of my spa. I get to hang out at the golf course, <laughs> so it's a fair trade. You really do love this game, don't you? I do. And when did you start playing? I started in junior. So 15, really? 16, started playing there, learned to play in the rain. Because I played out in Victoria, so it rained all winter. So mm-hmm. I learned in rain gear and... From there, you just found a love of it, and I enjoy it. Did you did you take lessons early on, or did, still never taken a formal really, lesson? Never wow. taken a formal lesson. That's amazing. But I've got a lot of friends that have played on the PGA Tour, so there's a lot of subtle help. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's a little bit better, less pressure. There's no pressure when it's just subtle help. Yeah. When you're playing with them, there might be a little bit because they're happily take some money out of your pocket. So <laughs> it just forces you to get better. I was going to say, a little motivation never hurt anyone. It's good motivation. Mm. All right, so we got. Coachella Valley has been in the league for two years. Yep. Both years, they end up in the 
the Calder Cup finals with Hershey, and they, you know, Hershey won them both. Turn out the right way. Mm -hmm. So do we see, do we foresee between you two, because I don't really follow the AHL all that much, do you foresee another matchup again next year? I'd love to see it. Yeah. I mean, we're going to be a little bit younger. It'll be a, probably a little bit of a tougher road, but at the same time, we still get a lot of skill. So we're going to have that chance. The Bears, I just talked to them already. They're retooling the roster as everyone had to do like two days after the season ended. And uh, they're bringing back about 80% of their guys. Feel pretty confident with that. And then the luxury that Hershey has is they got Todd Nelson. And, and what he's brought in has been great. And Dan Bilesma was awesome for Coachella Valley, but he's taken his shot again at the NHL. So uh, I think everyone here wants to see it again. I mean, it's been great. To, it's had fireworks the last two years. I know we'd enjoy it. Well, listen, Third hope, a charm. hopefully you <laughs> hopefully you get another trip to Hershey in next year for the Calder Cup finals. If not. If and not. then a second visit <laughs> again at the mid Penn Bank Celebrity Golf Classic. You come back next year? Most definitely. Yeah, we, That'll and, be the first visit for sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> great. Grant, thank you so much. Always have a pleasure. great day out there with these guys. Yeah, we'll have some fun. Yeah. All That's right, good. here we are with Nate Stupar. <laughs> How's it going? Who is, you know, like, okay, you guys – the Penn State connection. Of course. You know, yeah, so I'm going to let you handle most of this because, you know, if I ask you the questions, that. it'll be about. I am not you know. doing that. Can you do the Penn State noise? Because that's what he's doing over here. <laughs> no. I can do a Joe Paul voice. Please. Get, get him out of here. That's get him out of here. Mickey Mouse, but okay. We're so, in. what did you. Did you play for Paterno all your years? Yeah, so uh, I was there from 07 to 11, yeah. and Joe Pa, my last year, that's when the whole thing kind of went down and the whole shift in the program. So, uh, But no, he was my coach the whole entire time, right. and he was old school and hard did you, nose. Did you do a redshirt year? Did you? Just, yeah. yeah, yep, yep. So I you played were actually five years. on the team I came, five years? Yep, yep. So what, what's that like? We, we talked to Scott Fitzke earlier yeah. and you know scott old school Joe scott Bob. was yeah he was yeah old school it was then, yeah. it was it was fun man i mean it was hard nosed pa football you know yeah. um we we were in the big 10 so they ran a lot so we had to go against powers and power eyes and stuff like that so it was always you know nine on seven going against the fullback and stuff like that so it was always those drills of just like getting your mind right all the time and uh that helped me personally because I wasn't the most physical linebacker when I was playing. I, mm -hmm. I transferred from a playing defensive end in high school. Mm -hmm. So when I went from three point stance to uh, being a two point stance, visually it was completely different. Normally my contact was immediate. Right. And when I had to learn to like move, then learn how to strike. So it, it definitely helped me prolong my career in the NFL mm -hmm. because I kept on learning every single year becoming a linebacker and linebacker you was yeah yeah i mean yeah. Like that, that's I, gotta be like if joe paterno yeah. says you're a linebacker you're you're a linebacker right? yeah dude i was playing with sean lee navarro boom and i saw paul puzzlesny uh i played with josh hall mike Motti, gerald hodges like i'm just naming a handful that i played around and uh it was just i remember the one game i, I redshirted the one year and sean lee on the goal line took on the fullback threw him out of the way, tackled the running back, stripped the running back, and recovered the football. And I was like, is this what they expected me at linebacker <laughs> you? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, ah, I think I signed up for the wrong camp or something. I don't know. So is were you specialist always specialist position open? I'll go I'll go kick. Hey, hey, you know? hey. Special teams was my jam. I mean, I knew that was my career going forward and I knew I could play a long career if I made my name on special teams. And I'm like I, I could be a starter, but I know my role in the NFL with how my college career was, I was going to be a backup in special teams. I took that to heart, and I was able to carve out eight years. That's what's special, though, I think, about the way that Penn State prepares guys for yeah. the future is these guys just want to play. It's just a bunch of football kids who want to find a way to be on the field. You see that in the guys that are here, other Penn Staters. Yeah. They all found different ways to prolong their careers. Is that in the DNA of a Penn State football player? I believe so because, I mean, I've talked to a lot of GMs and scouts over the past years and just going up the pro days and whatnot and the, the consistency of them talking about the Penn State players are hard-nosed, smart, and they're not going to screw up. Mm. And the NFL is looking for those type of people who are smart, don't have to get yelled at all the time, and don't make mistakes, and the key word is consistent because right. if you are not consistent – because if you make one mistake, I remember that's how I got cut from the Jaguars. It was preseason. I missed my fit on two consecutive plays, and they pulled me, and 
I was out. I was cut. Then I went to the Falcons for two years, then the Saints for two years, and the Giants for two years. So, yeah. So, eight year career is pretty yeah. darn good, man. It yeah. Uh, I forget who did a, a, a radio show, um, but they did the the number of players who made it eight plus years of the whole entire NFL history. history. Yeah. Oh, Guess gosh. how many? Could even. A thousand. Over like 1,300 players. Really? That's it. Wow. The whole history. And you have 300 and some players get drafted every single year. So you're, and you you're have saying you're one players. of 1,300. Of the whole I always conception you were a special of guy. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says the same thing, but I think she means something else. So how's, <laughs> how's the family? You they're have, good. They're you good. Have three daughters? I got four daughters. Four daughters. So, uh, so you have what I wanted. I want yeah. four daughters. <laughs> and she said no. after three, my wife said, yeah, no more. That, uh, we, we had four and uh, we're at three and we're just like, we're kind of done, but we weren't really sure if we were or not. <laughs> and uh, then we had our fourth, that- Annie Mae, and I couldn't imagine life without her. Yeah. And if you guys are wondering who that was, that is <laughs> Ray Ray, Rob Stupar, my little brother. And, the Stupar uh, brothers. He's, he's they, one of my best they, friends. They travel as a clan. I yeah. The Stupar three. You don't bring you don't bring one without the other. Yeah. Right. <laughs> John came the first year by himself. Then he was like, "You guys got to come yeah. every other year." He goes, so. Hey, you got to meet this guy Rory, and it's a it's a great tournament. This is amazing. Tournament. Listen, one of our favorites. You guys have been amazing. Appreciate that. Uh, with this, and you know, there's so many times when you plug in holes. That, you know, that, you know, someone doesn't show up, or someone doesn't yeah. do anything, and or you have to play two. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. two scrambles. Yeah. And it's been it's been really cool, man. And hey. I consider well, you guys great friends. Appreciate Love that. Love seeing you around. Hey, when you when you get the Stupar brothers, you can con- uh, count on consistency. And <laughs> we're our our dad uh, taught us growing up be a man of your word. Yeah. So if we're gonna show up. We're gonna show up. Right. And whatever you need, we're here to help out and uh, just have a good time and have have fun with people. Well, your Love little him, brother uh, ran off. He took your golf cart, so you're walking. I t- <laughs> well, I gotta get my steps in anyway. So <laughs> we'll get someone to take you up there. <laughs> no, you're good. I'll hey, run. go go have a good time the rest of the day. Appreciate Love it. You. Thanks for uh, stopping by and talking to Allie and me for a little bit. And no go problem. get them, man. Love it. All right, all right. Here we are with Charles Johnson. Charles, first thing. How's it going out there today? It's going great, man. The weather is good. Cloud cover. I got a great group yeah, of guys. Yeah, the cloud cover is good. Um, we're hitting the ball fairly well, man. The par threes are eating us up, but even Mr. Holmes thought we were cheating a little well, who, bit. Wait, who's Mr. Holmes? Is that you know who Mr. Holmes is? Nah. Oh, Santana. Santonio. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he was he's kind of watching our Mister. ball. Mr. <laughs> he thought we marked the wrong ball, but I think it was just a little confusion. He kind of called us out. I appreciate him calling us out, but we're playing good. I think we're a lot under. Yeah, it's, uh, I think they said they were eleven under. <laughs> Yeah, we're probably the par threes. The only thing we part every single par three, so we're about nine. Yeah, probably nine. So nine. as a as a receiver in the league for a bunch of years, do you call him Mister because of the catch? Yeah, man. I mean, he's an older guy, he's a little bit older than I am, and he's one of the guys I grew up watching. Right? right. So my dad loved the Pittsburgh Steelers, and growing up, he's one of the guys I got to watch. And seeing guys like that, you got to give them their respect. Yeah. Um, you got to make sure that. Where I was coming up following in guys like his footsteps, him, Chad Ochocinco, um, those are guys I got to look up to. So, yeah, man, he's going to always be Mr. Holmes to me, but he's a good guy. At yeah. The end of the day, and he played amazing football. Yeah, he did. And that was a great, that was an amazing. That was a crazy. Catch, man. Catch. Every time I watch that catch, he's got like the two tops of his toes, yeah. you know, are, are inbounds and, and he's stretched completely out. Exactly. Was, and in that moment, like, that's got to be, I think. The greatest catch in NFL history. Yeah, that's because it's he definitely up it, there. Game's over. They it's lose. definitely up there. You know? Like I know, I just know he, how he felt after that catch. Had to have been like amazing. Oh my god, I, can, I they, can't imagine because it's like you made the play. That it's almost like what's you're in that, shock. So what's that like? That moment, like you, you've had big catches in your career. You maybe yeah. some game winners. Whatever, yeah, like. man. I had a really big catch versus Chicago Bears. Um, we we're on a two minute drive. I had about thirty seconds left. Um, I had a, I think I had like a dig route, but they played a cover two and I kind of converted it. And Teddy threw me up a go, a go ball down the sideline. I went up on one of the Brid, safety's uh, heads. Bridgewater, Bridgewater, yeah, yeah. And I went up on top of the safety's head, took it off his nugget, and <laughs> he ended up tackling me. We kicked the field goal to win the game, win the division. So I just remember when I caught it, nobody touched me. And I just heard one of my teammates, Jay Wright, like say, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> I was in shock still. I was like, damn, I just made a crazy play. I was rolling on the get ground. Get the game ball that day? I think I did. I can't remember, man. Yeah. I just remember I was crying and everything out there. I was like, we won. So it, it was exciting. That's really cool. Yeah. So let's talk about yesterday. 
So the shootout, which is something that, you know, I've wanted to get you in for, yeah. for several years. This, this was the sixth shootout. And you've been coming to the golf tournament for a few years yeah, now. This is, yeah, four, four, four five, years. Yeah, I think, yeah, four or five years. Yeah. And, like, the thing that always struck me about you is you were re ready to go play golf and, and team up with any group of sponsors. Oh, yeah. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people don't show up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, you know, show up late, whatever. And I remember one day you were in the morning scramble. Yeah. And someone didn't show up in the afternoon scramble. And you were just coming off the golf course. I said, Charles, will you go back out? You said, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you went right absolutely. back out. So we get you in the shootout. It didn't go the way you wanted. But what did you what did you take away from yesterday? Man, I mean, first and foremost, man, I appreciate you all having me, man. And anything I can do to help the cause, it's always – that's what we're here for. Right. Um, so doing something like that, going out there and golf with some sponsors – that's what I, that's, it's important to me. Um, but getting into that shootout, I was excited. Um, I got paired up with Anthony. I was like, all right, we got a really good shot at this. So first hole, we come out, we birdie. Second hole, we par. Third hole, I hit it right off the tee, left him a downhill lie, and he kind of chunked it. Had about 40 in over a bunker. I said, I got this easy shot. I hit it into the bunker, and... We never got out of it. We both yeah. got two swings each. Never got out of it. I mean, it was good to get the in there bunkers, my first time. Were the bunkers playing, like, tough yesterday? Because yes. there, I heard uh, on your side there were a lot of, you know, difficult bunker shots. It was. It's just – it was some was hard, some was soft. You never knew what type of swing you was getting. So, a lot of people were blading it over. A lot of people was just picking up too much sand. So, right. it was crazy. I mean, it was good for my first time getting there, but I can tell you, I was, it's crazy. As many – crowds as I played in audience I was out there my heart was beating <laughs> I was cool but once I got over my ball my hands started sweating <laughs> I, I was like this is crazy but I truly enjoyed it and I mean now I got a little feeling for it and you said he's been doing it for a while so he's a little bit more prepared so I think I'd be better he, off. but but guys like you know Anthony Worrell who's a great sponsor mm -hmm. you know he's been here since the very beginning for us like that's a tough spot for those guys to be in mm -hmm. it is I've played in shootouts not not this one but uh, Ron Jaworski had a shootout mm -hmm. for a bunch of years. I played in it twice. I mean, I was as nervous as a long tail cat <laughs> in a room full of rocking chairs. I mean, it was, you know, it is the epitome of nerves. Oh, yeah. I think for someone, like, you've been in the stadium with 70,000 screaming fans, and you've had big moments, and, you know, I know you had to learn how to handle that stress. But when you're on a golf course, and it's like a bunch of people standing around, and you got that, <laughs> you and that ball – that's that's nerves. It's nerves, and it's crazy because like we play in front of crowds, but it's almost like for us in football, it's it's so natural. It's just what we do. So right. you almost still don't even feel the crowd. But when you get up there with that ball and you got to hit it out there in a big open space, a ball that don't move, it's so much more stressful than people think. Absolutely. And those people are looking at you and you're like, please just don't dribble. You're thinking about every negative thought. Um, but that's why people are drawn to this game. That's why I love it because it's always competitive. No matter if you're Tiger Woods. Or us out here just slapping the ball around. You got to think about every shot, and you can do ninety nine things right and do one little thing wrong, right. and you got a bad shot. Well, so you know, so I talked to Anthony last night. And of course, you know, he he's disappointed that you guys lost, but <laughs> he said, "Man, I love Charles, and I'll I'll play with him again next year if you want me to." So, you know, you you just do an incredible job, Charles, and I I can't tell you about how much that means to this golf tournament because you know we're trying to do some special things mm -hmm. here, right? And, you know, the special thing that we're trying to do is raise enough money to make a difference, mm -hmm. you know, to push the needle a little bit. And we can't do that without you guys exactly. because you guys are the ones that bring the sponsors back. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, you're, they want to write big checks because of you guys. And they don't really care about star power. Yeah, yeah. They don't care about how many years you played in the NFL, yeah. how many touchdowns you had or mm -hmm. anything like that. <laughs> they care about how you treat, treat them. them. And, yes, and you have a very good uh, habit of yeah. treating people right I'm yeah. sure that probably came from your mom and dad. And, yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's just who I am, and I'm I'm big. When you say the word difference, I got a brand and a foundation that I'm starting called The Difference. How do I create a difference in community by serving and impacting the, the youth? Um, being able to find ways for them to participate in, whether it be training or double ABC basketball or baseball, or whatever it is, and money's not the reason why they don't get better. Right. So that's how I'm here. I'm here to serve and – I'll tell people all the time, people are going to forget how many touchdowns you caught. Like, San Antonio Holmes, it's it's amazing set catch, but people will forget that at mm -hmm. one point. They'll never forget how you treat them. That's right. Um, so I always try to leave that impression on people. I don't want people to judge me because I'm an NFL guy. I want them to judge me based off my character and who I am and what I'm going to bring to the table and 
treating everybody the same way, no matter who you are. So that's always been who I am as an individual because I think that carries you way further. Absolutely. Well, oh, yeah. It shows. Appreciate All right, it. Go on. I know they need you. <laughs> go out there you. and keep them going. All right, here we are with Gerald Henderson Sr. Now, the first thing I got to tell you is we had Junior on. He was like one, one of the first guests. He said some really good things about you. He also said you, you were a tough dad. Because I reminded him of the story that you told me, I don't know if it was this morning or yesterday morning, where you said I made him, he missed a one foot putt in the tournament. I made him go out there and it, you know, a hundred of them straight. Well, you know, Roy, on the way back home, we, I don't think we said a word to each other. <laughs> the next morning, come on, get that baby up there. The, morning, the next morning, six o'clock, said, come on, go with me. He said, where are we going? I said, we're going to putt free. So we, I said, what are we going to do? He said, well, we're going to make a hundred from one foot. <laughs> right. I said. <laughs> he missed one at about 50. He had to start all over. <laughs> I know. He, t- he told us that. He said, you know, so I, I had to make a hundred. He said, and I, I did miss one. He made me start over. And I'll be like, I hope that was early on. He said, I think it was around in the middle. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so is he like Earl Woods? And he said, yeah, I used to call him Gerald Woods. <laughs> You know, golf is hard, man. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, he came to me when he was 13 or 14, playing good, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, Dad, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I said, why, why, you know? He said, it's too hard. Right. This game is too hard. You know, luckily, he was a, he was a pretty good basketball player. So we were talking about this yesterday when guys picked up the game. And, you know, I don't know how many guys in the NBA were playing golf when you were in the NBA, but – I, I suspect it's a lot more now yeah. Um, because of, you know, principally because of Tiger Woods' influence, you know. I mean, he brought a lot of different people to the game. So when did you start playing? Well, I started about 40 years ago, believe it or not. Yeah. You can't tell by my game. My game talking about, like man? started you're, like you're... a week ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I tell people that, you know, if, if I didn't have golf and was able to be around the guys and – talk junk and have a fellowship and have a great time, man, I'd be in the same asylum. Yeah. Because it's a good game. You can come out and relax. You can play to you, to you kick the bucket, you know, and uh, it's a great game, man. Uh, that's why I had to pass it on to my two sons. And, you know, we, we're able to get out there and play and have a good time. It's something we can do together. And it's, it's something that you can turn on that competitive fire, right? Because, like, I don't know how many – how you do that? Like you play in the NBA for so many years, you win three championships. I mean, you got, you know, tons of great moments and you've heard, you know, cheers and you've been, you've heard booze, you've got all that stuff. And like when you retire and that gets turned off, you got to find a way to keep that competitiveness Absolutely. gone and, and golf's a way to do it. Like you said, you can do that until the day you die, right? You can, you, and, and, and it's a game where you have your ups and downs. It's an imperfect game. Right. Uh, Tiger, Jack, they they they're really excellent. They're the greatest ever, but it's an imperfect game. It's it's no perfect score. Right. It is, but nobody has achieved that. Right. So, uh, hey man, I I love it, and uh, I'm gonna play it till I'm. You know, but 80. that's that's not why you're here, though, is it? No, uh, I'm here for the fellowship. I'm here for the charity. Uh, like I told you, Roy, uh, uh, my wife had breast cancer, and uh, she's cancer-free now. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I told the ladies the other day, I feel the emotion and everything that goes along with it. So uh, I'm, I'm going to come back here as long as I'm able to, to make it. Yeah. Well, you got an open invite, man. I mean, not just because you need to defend championships and things like, you know, you were obligated to come this year. You had to defend your championship from last year. Well, now, after your early exit yesterday, <laughs> well, Roy, you think I did. early yesterday, early yesterday, I came into the breakfast thing. I said, the champ is here. <laughs> when I came off the course, couldn't say that. Yeah. Couldn't say it. Well, I'm, I'm sure someone will be saying that next year. Probably Greg Lloyd. Oh, we'll be back. Yeah. The yeah. Hendersons will be back. Like I told you, you know, we're going to change the name of that trophy to the Henderson trophy. Well, someone wanted to remind, someone wanted me to remind you. Yeah. That you made that declaration at the champions dinner the other night that if if another Henderson won that we're gonna have to name the Henderson Trophy and they said that's off the table now. 
Well, uh, we'll be back next year. We'll see about that. Well, look, you know, it's it's been a pleasure having you here. And you started coming early. I think 2017 might have been your first time here. You know, yeah. and the tournament was, you remember, it was way different then. Oh, yeah. You know, there were maybe five or six celebrities. You were one of them. And, and we didn't have, you know, as big a crowds and we didn't raise as much money. But, you know, that's the thing about this, Gerald. It's, it's you know, all of us pulling together and creating something that's really, truly magical and, and really starting to push the needle on contributions. We're going to cr- go over a million dollars. Oh, wow. This year. And, you know, we've made some promises to those two organizations that we're giving money to. And, you know, they're using that money to take care of women who already have breast cancer and to try to find a cure. And, like, I can't imagine that there's anything that's more important for us to do as a, as a community of people who have been impacted by breast cancer, either directly as you have or indirectly as I have. You know, no one in my family ever had it, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, a lot of friends and and uh, so, you know, I, we couldn't do this without you, man. And I, I, I love having you here. I hope you come back every year. And thank you so much, man. Well, I'll be back, Roy. And as long as uh, I hope Mid Penn Bank stays in it, mm-hmm. I hope you stay in it. Mm-hmm. You're a driving force for this tournament. You know, you're a great guy, and uh, we appreciate all that you do. And I know the community does too. Well, God willing, I'm going to be around for another 10, 15 years, and you know, hopefully making a difference. And, you know, the day that I retire and walk away from this, I got a lot of people that have, you know, really oh, yeah. picked it up. Oh, and it's a great organization and they love this golf tournament. It's part of the culture of the company. And so we couldn't do it without you though, bro. Hey, thanks, Roy. And uh, see you back next year. All right, go get them. Love you, man. <laughs> All right, here we are with former Major League Baseball player, Greg Vaughn. Greg, how's it going out there today? It's going good, you know. Yeah? Too bad uh, I can't play. I can just putt, you know what I mean? But Why can't you play? I had reverse shoulder replacement about oh, seven man. weeks ago. So, oh, okay. A little early to swing the club, but you know, I can so hang out with the guys. How? What's the you know recovery time for that? Well, this is my second one in uh, seven months, so uh, hopefully another six to eight weeks, I'll be ready to go. Is that from your plan days? I think everything's from my plan yeah. days. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> everything. Yeah. yeah. So how how is the the team that you're playing with today? Hey, they're good, man. They're fine. Who who are you with? Let me, let me see over there. Oh, where where are they? We got Eli. We got Tom. We got Grant. What? No, I'm saying who's, <laughs> who's his team? What are you? Yeah. What are you? Is this, yeah. See, same yeah, no. you. Like you know, he it makes all these connections, and then he thinks he's running the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's boss man. You know what I mean? But these these events are are fun, right? Oh yeah, without a doubt. You know what I mean? A lot of them you meet. I mean, you meet some really really cool good people. You know yeah. what I mean? They become lifelong sort of uh you know friends Mm -hmm. you know they're they're in your village and you know it's amazing what you know charity events do you know i'd say thank you to you guys for uh you know sponsoring this and doing what you do because you know you know that the word that starts with the c is horrible right i mean so thank you for all that you guys do we really appreciate it well you know so we we've talked about this so much this week and um you know, at the champions dinner, you know, I know you were there and, you know, you heard my speech and, and, um, you know, the most important thing that we're doing this week is raising some money and giving it to two great organizations. But that's the, that's the end product, right? Like the formula is you guys come and you do so well with our sponsors that they want to come, they want to write big checks. And then that allows us to do, you know, really special things with the tournament, which one makes you guys want to come back. And it just, it, you know, it's a really good cycle that ends with really significant contributions to those charities. Yeah, you know, plan it forward. You know what I mean? Right. It's a, you know, it is a tremendous job with you and your volunteers and your staff do. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm a lifer. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, if you can get me to come out here and I can't play, you know what I mean? Right. You can't keep me away if I can play. No, so. we got to just get you healthy and yeah, 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 <laughs> get yeah. you back in here next year for the get get you in the shootout because I know. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, watching the shootout's killing me. But you know, it's uh once again, like I said, man, it's uh you know, it's it's people and organizations like yourself and Mid Penn Bank, you know, all and all the sponsors, you know, to come out here and sacrifice time and and dollars to try to find a, a cure for this horrible disease, you know, and support two wonderful organizations. I mean, that's, that's what coming out here is all about. That's you know, right. 
all this other stuff is a bonus. You That's know right. I mean? That's know, absolutely right. You know, you know, trying to make a difference, you know, trying to make t- uh, this world better today than it was yesterday and uh, just trying to do our part. So what's Corinne up to today? Uh, she is in the spa. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, with the ladies. Good. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if she got the... Yeah. She got the invite to be there, but that's good. So my wife's are ho- hosting the ladies, and we we even talked about that today. That you know the women that coming along with a lot of the players, um, they get as involved in this golf tournament as as the, the guys do. Yeah, and, yeah, without a doubt. You know, yeah. because, you know some of them firsthand have experienced you know what you guys are trying to find a cure for, and uh, and then a lot of them, you know, once they get here, they, you know, we all know somebody as we get to this age, and right. you know, know somebody that has been affected by that. That horrible word, you know. I hate right. saying it. Right. You know, that's my zodiac sign. I still hate right. saying it. Right. But it's, uh, you know, I think once you get out here, man, you, you see, you know, the type of guys come back, you know, time and time again, and you know, ninety nine percent of it, that is at the partnership who right. you're with. You know what I mean? Because it makes everything work. You do have some good relationships with all the other celebrities too, right? Like oh, you guys yeah. see each other at a lot of these events, and yeah, you do. You know, and. uh you know that that's that's our, our clubhouse. You know because right. everyone says, "Do you miss playing the game?" I don't. I don't miss playing the game. I right. miss the clubhouse. Yeah. You know you miss the fans. Mm-hmm. You you miss the clubhouse. You miss stuff like that. But other than that, you know, uh, everything hurts too much. Too much now. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, 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 Gerald's taking a practice swing and he's saying, "Oh, Sally, he's hurting already." <laughs> Let, let's. Hey, Greg, come on. Uh, you you might be injured, but we can critique his swing. Yeah, yeah we can. All right. So this is Gerald he, he Henderson, passes. senior on the tee. <laughs> Past champion. Greg, I want you to critique this swing. Oh, good rotation. Uh, oh, 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 good follow through. You know, he, he sort of likes crowds. Well, you don't have to look yeah, at it. 180 <laughs> down the middle. You know, it's not bad. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you're next up on the tee. I know they want you to probably try the putting contest. Thanks for coming over, saying hello for a little bit. And thanks for coming back this year. Every year, man. Yeah, we for need sure. You here. For All sure, right? bro. You got it. You, you won't see me on the tee box. I'm definitely on the putting green. Though. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, next year, you get healthy. Yep. And you're in the shootout. Let's go, yeah, baby. Let's go. Right. Thank you. Love you. Man. Thank you for listening to the Mid Pen Bank podcast. If you like what you've heard, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. The podcast can be found at Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever you find great podcasts. If you have any feedback or questions, email us at podcast at midpenbank.com. References in this podcast to MidPen are to MidPen Bancorp, Inc. and its subsidiaries and affiliates. This podcast expresses the views of its participants and may not represent the views of MidPen or its officers and employees. In addition, these views are subject to change without notice, and MidPen has no duty or obligation to update the information contained in this podcast. This podcast is being made available for informational purposes only and should not be used for any other purposes. You are encouraged to consult with competent legal, tax, accounting, or investment professionals before engaging in any financial transaction. MidPen does not make any warranties as to the accuracy or completeness of the information in this podcast, does not endorse any third-party companies, products, or services, and assumes no liability for your use of this information. Forward-looking statements should not be considered guarantees or predictions of future events. This podcast is the sole property of MidPen and may not be copied, reproduced, republished, or posted in whole or in part in any form without prior written consent of MidPen.